Can't wait to see episode five. They fly now, guys. They fly now. They fly now. That's not. That's wild, dude. Flying Sith Lord. Well, just when I thought I hadn't seen it all. I was like Mary Poppins. It's probably a witch. It's probably a witch that studied the the, the dark arts. It's probably one of the witch that survived. What was her name? Coral. I'll bet you it's Coral. So remember how she controlled uh, Jedi Master uh, Turban? Where he like took the the poison and killed himself with the black eyes. He probably did that with May. May ends up burning the the brick walls. Frames it on the Jedi. And she's probably alive. What was it? Twenty eight minutes or something? Of actual episodic beauty. The whole time I was just like, hey, are we uh, are we gonna get to the point here? And of course they're just dragging it along until Mary Poppins shows up. Smilo Ren with his grill. If you're that powerful with the Force, I'm pretty sure Yoda is going to sense your ass from a mile away. But yeah, let's just not tell the the Jedi High Council. That's a very Jedi thing to do, is to hide <laughs> literally a threat of your Jedi Masters dying from Yoda. Sounds logical. I, I think, yeah, all these Jedi Masters need to be literally expelled. Not to defend Disney, but Count Dooku did fly in the 2003 Clone Wars the same way this dude did. Nice. That was also a 2D animation, and that never happened in the movies. <laughs> Even the set, like, like the guy comes up top the hill, the Jedi, so I can't find him. And then the Jedi come in through, we need a tracker for our tracker to track trackers. You ever watch Star Wars? Can you imagine Qui-Gon walking up to the screen like that? The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. I don't know, dude. I just, I don't feel, I'm not feeling the whole show. It just, and I'm just going to get more and more less nice as episodes go by just because it's pissing me off how this got $180 million and Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't. Even if it did, you know, it still would have been hit because of the writing. Joby Harold, big pat on his back. Uh, you got your money. You're happy. I, God, I, I, th I think we're like unveiling a new era of Star Wars theory. It's, it's, it's unfortunate to see, but it's like, I see through the lies of the Jedi. And it's, it's, it's literally how I feel like the character arc here of the channel is going. It's it, eight years of lore and fan fictions and animations and theories. And, and it's now just like, I have to stand up for this bullshit. This is just, this is just, I don't know. And I, I am so thankful that so many of you are riding with me, man. I built this shit. Me. Brick by brick. Brick by brick. Covered in stone, stone around them. But yeah, the things are burning. Right? From one little fire, like every, the whole thing crumbles down. Kilnaka does fight in the trailer, but he's fighting Torbin on the witch planet. If you look closely, we were indeed Kelnaka master baited. <laughs> Damn, I uh, usually catch those, but so everyone in the scene has to die now, right? Everybody in the show that we have seen has to die. Well, you know, I just don't get how these Jedi masters who are obviously very accredited are hiding this information from the Jedi high council. I'm sorry, but if there is some, like, minor detail going wrong with, like, the vending machine, the Jedi High Council hears about it, let alone you're telling me that there's a rogue sister of a former student of the Jedi who has already killed two Jedi Masters, and you're just gonna keep it hush-hush? Well, that's very convenient for your show. Even a Padawan would have a very hard time keeping secret, let alone an entire room of Jedi Masters. God, you just don't watch Star Wars, do you, Leslie? You just have no idea what you're talking about. I guess Anakin blew up the Death Star. How, what do you know? But if you can't look and see the Anakin blowing up the Death Star. Stop the cow. <laughs> Jesus, dude. What's with the 80s slasher gimp mask Sith? <laughs> yeah, are we watching Pulp Fiction? What's going on here? Did he come out of that box? <laughs> The edits. Bro, the edits. I can see them now. Y'all better tag me in those edits when you do that, when you do that mashup. All my older, older crew in here, you guys are around my age or older. You've seen Pulp Fiction. You know what I'm talking about. I am so effing far from okay right now. Okay? No, man. I'm pretty f far from okay. <laughs> With the poop storm, Acolyte has proved to be about a breath of fresh air. Let's go back and visit Fat Mace, the one Jedi who did not get consumed by the dark side, but consumed it himself. Fat Mace is the only one that could save us now. Don't underestimate the power of Fat Mace Windu. <laughs> oh, if only Plagueis and Palpatine could sense Smilo Ren, dude. And that immense level of power. Oh, God, what a... F Keep in mind, man, Plagueis and Tenebris are around. 80... This is uh 80 years before episode 1. 87 years or something like that. And Star Wars The Acolyte has $7 million more in budget than the first two original movies. And this is what they gave us. Pretty amazing, hey? First two Star Wars movies didn't even amount to what this project cost. May killed two Jedi Masters and blamed them for killing her family when she killed them just to say, this hike is hard. I'm just going to turn myself in. Then I could have done that in the first place. Pretty cool writing. Gotta say. Gotta, I didn't even remember that. 
That's how like out of it I am. Pretty insane, dude. And this is a theme in Star Wars where they do this a lot. The first time I was subject to it was the Battlefront 2 campaign with Aiden Versio. How she was, it, it, the game was touting and bragging about how you get to play the dark side, the part of the Empire. And all of a sudden in the game, spoilers, she just switches up. Ah, you know what? This ain't for me anymore. Even though my dad's part of the Empire, he's like, <laughs> Eh, this is not for me. He's been an admiral or whatever he was. I think I'm going to join the rebels. Okay. It's like every single project they have where you think like, all right, cool. We're going to follow the dark side a little bit for once. Switch up. What in the world, dog? What happened to fight me with everything you have? Like, and then all of a sudden, no, my allegiance lies with my sister. It's like, well, why didn't you think of that? last episode what i mean wouldn't you guys have like embraced each other right away like what's the i don't know dude this is just weird and it doesn't seem like she was uh mind controlled either because she would have told me like like oh shit it wasn't me i was mind controlled back when you remember when she was like i'll kill you this show is just i'm just along for the ride at this point you say that the clone wars was george's yet you love dave because of clone wars which is and do you still think dave is good fan of you. Well, Dave and George created the Clone Wars in a collaborative effort. You can't really have the Clone Wars without Dave Filoni's influence, but you can have the Clone Wars, I think, with Dave, with with just George Lucas, because he would have hired someone else, but it would have been different. I think Dave Filoni had a lot of influence in the Clone Wars, and I think he did a lot of good for Star Wars. As for today, I don't know. It's easy to put the blame on people, but I think at the end of the day, we have to look at the people who are really in charge, and that's Kathleen Kennedy, and above her is Bob Iger. These are the people that I look to. The buck stops with them. Dave can can be fired like that. Uh, Kathleen, I think it's a little more difficult. The way I look at it is like, how hard is it to fire someone? Bob Iger is like kind of impossible to fire him. Kathleen Kennedy, pretty impossible to fire her. Dave Filoni, difficult, but you can find a replacement. And so those people don't have as much power as Kathleen Kennedy. That's at least my rationale of it, but I could be wrong. None of us have the inside scoop on Lucasfilm and uh, their politics and who they hire and how they hire, how they fire. I think we make pretty good guesstimates, but he's doing as much as he can. And I don't think, I mean, I don't know. My trust in him is becoming shaken too over time. I don't, I don't know what to say, what to think anymore. It's, I, I have grown weak and tired. That episode was weird and confusing to me, says Spectre Gaming and Reacts. But I have to admit that ending has interested me a bit. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm not excited. I'm looking forward to it. Why are y'all saying 3042? 3042 Monday confirmed in the credits? No, he's not. Get out of here, man. 3042. You're telling me that's Kiati Mundi. Shut your face. No, he's not. And you're telling me he doesn't tell the council. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my shit if that's the case. And here we go doesn't know Star Wars, does she? So not only do we have Kiari Mundi, what about the droid attack on the Wookiees, right? That's the meme that made him famous. Believe me, in the 2000s, that meme didn't exist, and he was just Kiari Mundi. So we have Kiari Mundi, who not only doesn't look like Kiari Mundi, because they effed up his makeup, just like they did with the wardrobe and Kelnaka looking like Harry and the Henderson, but now they have him corroborating with a lower tier sect of Jedi Masters who don't L Yoda and the Supreme Council the higher Jedi Council about this rogue person who is killing Jedi Masters. <laughs> God, you gotta be kidding me. There's just no way. There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, am I losing my mind? Was that, is that, is this a joke? Maybe, is this the wrong Kiati Mundi that I'm thinking of? Was that maybe, there was only one dickhead there. Kiati Mundi. There's one Sorelian there. So now every time we watch the prequels, we know that Kiati Mundi, so Kiati Mundi has to die. Kiani Mundi has to die. The guy in the prequel trilogy who says the Sith haven't returned for millennia is the same guy corroborating with Jedi to not tell Master Yoda and the same Jedi Council that he apparently gets promoted to or is on that the Jedi are fighting Sith now before the Phantom. You just got to sit back and watch it all unfold. It's it's really that amazing. It's that amazing. I, I'm glad you guys were spamming to go to that timestamp in the credits because I would not have seen that. I wouldn't have. I don't watch any extra minute of this show that I don't have to. It, this It's, it's. I mean, Mando, all those. I mean, I watched through the cold credits just to look at the beautiful concept art and to hear the beautiful music. 180. I, Mundo Corroborating. Not telling Master Yoda. Sounds good to me, man. What else are we going to have happen here? Is Darth Maul going to show up? Maybe from a different time and be like, hey, hey guys, just letting you know that I, I pop up in a little bit. I'm a Sith Lord. Oh yeah, no worries. Your, your time's not here yet. Oh, he's going to pop in a DeLorean. Why don't we have him show up too? What, what are people going to say to defend this? Oh, he, 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 uh, uh, I don't know. He's, you could just, just toxic. You just hate every, you're, you're sexist. Bro, why is Keanu Mundi here? He's not supposed to be here.
He would have told. He would have right away, man. He would have the same guy. Man, it's fuck. Fuck this show, man. Oh. He went the same guy that literally in episode one is like, oh, the Sith haven't shown up for a thousand years. Is the same guy corroborating and keeping the shit hidden? No. No. It's bullshit. Bullshit. You're telling me that freaking Tenebris out there right now doesn't sense this Smilo Ren guy and all of his power? Now nah, I'm losing my shit, dog. This is not cool. This is now have Kiati Mundi in there lying to Master Yoda and pretending the Sith haven't showed up for a thousand years. <laughs> Even though I know that I was keeping something hidden for like freaking what last 80 years and didn't tell anybody. She must have seen that so many people had criticism and she must have known that people would be like, well, how is it possible that the Acolyte show even exists if Kiati Mundi had said what he said and that the Sith haven't shown up for a thousand years? Let's put him in the show. Let's make him part of it. That'll detract everyone. That'll make it all okay. And I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're Kiati Mundi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Oh, we can't tell the Jedi High Council about this because then, uh, then they'll they'll find out and they'll tell the whole uh, the, the politics will be terrible and the Senate will find out. No, no, no. Wikipedia just changed their shit right now in real time. No way. Wouldn't put it past them. Look at that. They're quick. They are so quick. I literally just checked this at the end of the stream. Like this, I wish I showed it on screen. This wasn't there. Yeah, Mundi was born prior to 132 BBY. In 132 BBY, Mundi participated in a small council meeting called by Master Vernestra Rowe to discuss the emergence of the force sensitive assassin Meho Anasea. Yeah, let's just. Oh, wow. You know, I used to like this page. You gotta. <laughs> oh! Wait, why does it still say this in Wikipedia? I guess their shit hasn't updated yet. <laughs> Birth and infancy. Kiari Mundi, a Surian male, was born in 93 BBY on Surya. He was one of the several children in the Mundi family, but was the only boy among his siblings and one of the few males in his home village. As for the birth. <laughs> we go here. <laughs> Born 93 BBY. In canon now? It's 132 BBY? What are the origins of his birth? Where was he born? What are the stories? I mean, that's an extra 40 years added to his life. So are we going to get an extra 40 years of lore for Kiati Mundi? I'd love to know the story, Wikipedia. Can you guys please explain the 40 years of extra life that our beloved Jedi Master, who hadn't seen a Jedi in a thousand years? I mean, you guys are supposed to be for Star Wars. What are you doing? You're just bought out. This info is missing the following parameters. Death. <laughs> what do you mean? We know how he died. Sight error. God damn. They were quick to get on that one, like, eh? Someone get in there. We have to update it to Leslie Headland's shit lore that she just created and manipulated. Ah! Yeah, it looks like your site gave you a little bit of a crash. Closing reference. Missing four <laughs> reference. 93 BBY was born prior to 132 BBY. Huh? I don't understand. How was he born before 132 BBY? But here they say 93 BBY. Because they just manipulated the system because of a shitty show where the showrunner has no idea what Star Wars is. Site error, invalid, reference tag. No text was provided for ref reference name birth. Sometimes the music swells and the gods smile down upon us all. If you were a betting man, will we ever see Star Wars franchise turned around? Yes. If I were to bet, yes. Right now, it's at a point where people don't know what the hell they're doing. They're getting $180 million budgets. Everything always changes. Everything in life always changes. Nothing is constant. Today, you're having a horrible day. Tomorrow, you're going to have an amazing day. Time is the only thing, the only variable in that situation that changes. It could be within a moment. It could be 10 years. It could be 20 years. It could be 30 years. It could be long after you and I are dead. But I think it'll come back. But uh, I love you all. And remember, if you want to talk about Star Wars, make sure you do it respectfully and just give your opinions. That's it. That's all you got to do. Give your opinion and the reasons why you think so. That's all. Love you guys. Stay strong. Remember, George Lucas Star Wars is in all of us. One to six. And always will be. May the Force be with you all.